folks and welcome to the next uh, Panzer episode. So with the car reasonably driving under its own power and um, basic instrumentation working, um, I really want to be able to drive the car further and uh, in order to do that legally it needs to have passed uh, what in this country is called the NCT, which is the National Car Test. It's just a kind of annual um, health checkup for cars uh, that are more than 10 years old. And I think um, cars that are less than 10 years old have to have it every two years. So this particular vehicle last had one of those, I believe, around 2007. <laughs> so it's a little bit out of, uh, out of test. So one of the things uh, that's been on the car since I actually purchased it uh, was a persistent ABS warning light. And the ABS is the anti-lock braking system. Uh, which is a very important uh, safety aspect of the car and as such a failure of that system uh, means that I can't get a valid NCT uh, certificate for the car. So as I say, finally with the electrical stuff kind of working, um, drivetrain, all that basically functioning, I kind of decided to turn my attention to diagnosing uh, what's wrong. So did some work on it there yesterday, uh, just some basic electrical troubleshooting, went in on the module, measuring voltages and checking the wheel speed sensors and things like that. Uh, wheel speed sensors are one of the most common ABS, for ABS failures uh, due to their exposure to the environment and stuff like that. But to my surprise, all four of the sensors measured up fine. So checking around the pump, uh, which is located under the left front headlight, it's basically dead. But um, one of the big problems that had been going on was that one of the 12 volt feeds to the, to the ABS computer was missing and I had to chase around some tedious wiring diagrams and so forth and eventually discovered that it was a 12 volt feed that was originally derived from the ECU. So uh, once I had that bypassed, uh, the computer started to um, work normally, which is that the ABS light comes on when you turn the key on, goes back off, and then a few seconds later comes on again uh, to confirm that it's picked up a fault and is not functioning. So, in order to really diagnose what was going on in there, um, I decided I was going to have another go at the BMW ADS diagnostics uh, system. Now, because this is a pre-1999 uh, car, it does not have the usual 16-pin uh, OBD socket under the kind of steering wheel area that most modern cars have. Instead, it would have originally had around 20 pin diagnostic socket somewhere around this area uh, when the, the eight cylinder engine was installed. Now, when that was removed uh, along with its DME, um, we basically lost that. And we, we also removed the automatic gearbox uh, controller that was there at the time. And so the first thing that I had to do uh, was to look around to find the pins on the, uh, the actual wiring harnesses in the, the car. And primarily the uh, K-line uh, pin from the, the ABS computer. So I found that on a connect connector here, uh, it's called X69 pin 24 for anyone um, interested. And then the real fun starts. <coughs> this was not my first look at using ADS diagnostics on a older BMW. And I've been trying literally for a few years now and always met with complete failure. 
Um, ADS stands for, I think it's Advanced Diagnostics uh, System. And was written um, to run on very old computer hardware. Well, very, very old by today's standards anyway. Um, so, lots of information around the web, lots of people on forums talking about various ways to get it working with uh, USB um, to serial converters and sometimes PCMCIA serial converters in, la in la laptops. And I went back at it last night and I spent ages at it and I was getting nowhere. And it was, this was the same thing that's basically happened to me now for years. Um, I came upon another forum and it was a very good and concise explanation given. And that is that the BMW Diagnostics software for AD, ADS uh, was written in such a way that it bypasses the operating system and goes directly uh, to the hardware registers of the serial port. So it's it's looking for COM1, uh, I think the, the hex address is 3F8 or 03F8 and interrupt 4. If it does not find a serial port at those exact loca locations it just does not work and gives all kind of weird errors and it will just wreck your head totally guaranteed so other people have had success whereby they've managed to hack drivers together and things like, like that but I've just never made that happen at all so last night um, had a look on my again my uh, kind of um, you know kind of classified ads website and I found a guy locally that was selling this particular beauty this is a HP uh, pavilion desktop probably from around the late 90s to the early 2000s and this guy has a genuine hardware serial port at 03 F8 and interrupt 4, it's running Windows XP, it's quite a basic machine. Um, I paid 30 euros for it, including keyboard, mouse, monitor, the whole lot. Uh, brought it home this morning, cleaned it up a bit, put the software on, connected it to the car, straight up. Not a bother. So with this computer now and just a very very hacked to get together cable set um, I managed to use, I've had a board for a while now, it's called the Tiny ADS inter Interface, they're available on eBay for about $20. Uh, it connects to the serial port and has a little terminal strip on it to connect to the various pins that would have been on the diagnostic connector. So I just connected up three pins, power ground and uh, K-line to the um, ABS and uh, I'm, ta I'm talking to it and reading diagnostic data and real-time data from it. So why don't I shut up, because I've been rambling on here, and show you, you, you guys this thing working. Alright guys, so I'm just connected up here, really 100% ghetto. Uh, this is just barely enough just to communicate with the ABS. So I've got my pin 24, which is the K-line from the um, ABS module, uh, connected to back to my ADS interface here, which is the pin tw 20 pin. So I've just got ground and uh, 12 volts. Just to make life simple, on the ADS board I just loop the 12 volts and the ignition on, just uh, for simplicity's sake. So that's, you can see those green lights probably just there to the left of shot. So, let's get a look uh, at the computer here. Try and bring you guys in here. Hopefully you'll be able to see all this now. Alright, so 
I'm going to just go here to INPA. That just starts up and you'll see the two black dots, battery and ignition on. Uh, so you've got the various vehicles here you can communicate with. So we need to go to old models. Uh, let, me, let me get rid of this nonsense here. I uh, need to go to old models, which is Shift F9. Yeah. Shift F9. And we want E31 chassis. And we have ABS ASC5. So we want to uh, let me see if I can zoom you guys a little bit on this. Here we go. ABS ASC5. And there we are. So straight away we're communicating with our ABS uh, computer. So we want to go error memory. Um, we can do a lot of stuff. We can say info for example. And it will give us um, various information uh, about the module and so on. Let's go back with F10. Oh, unfortunately F10 exits me back out so I've got to go back and do this again. 9, chassis. There we go. And uh, we can do identification for example. And it'll give us various serial numbers and year and week of manufacture and things like that. Um, I think there's a uh, so we want to go error, which is F4. We want to go read error memory, F1. And here we are. So the first error is can message message error. Um, and that's basically there because the ABS module isn't receiving CAN messages uh, from the um, from the ECU or the uh, gearbox controller. But the two ones that are of most interest to us are servo motor and pump error, which basically means the valve uh, controller and the ABS pump, which is part of the same block, basically are not working. Um, so we can go um, back there and we should be able to, for example, you can also uh, read status, I think is F5. So it'll basically give us wheel speeds, um, throttle position, RPM and stuff like that there as well. So at some point I will probably end up um, having this computer uh, mounted in the car somewhere. Um, uh, communicating with the uh, modules. Now we can communicate with a lot more modules but this is just connected to the the ABS at the minute because that's the one that I'm most interested in. So over here a bit of a, you can see the little um, ADS board itself that's it there doing its thing um, so it's just a, a serial uh, connection and um, just some terminals then to connect to the various data lines on the car so that's kind of about um, that's kind of about where we're at and as I said I've just done this really ghetto here uh, I've just thrown the wires in you can pretty much see them there just 12 volts ground and the signal which I think is called the K line, I'm not 100% sure on that, I'm probably going to get um, <laughs> probably going to get uh, shot down for that now, it's probably something else uh, but I've came across that somewhere, I think that's what it is um, again just back to our computer, we can actually clear the codes, oh there's our dodgy computer not bad for 30 bucks. Um, so we can clear errors. Like if we go to the error screen again there, you can clear clear error memory. So I can press F2. Error memory has been cleared. I'm going to say read error memory. And it says none found. But as soon as I recycle the key and the ABS system starts up again, um, it'll, it'll pretty much find... Uh, It'll pretty much find uh, the same errors again.
kind of um, yeah proving that they're actually there so that's about it folks um, thanks for watching as uh, as always thanks for all the support and uh, I'm gonna go buy myself a new ABS pump and uh, we'll be back soon uh, with some more Panzer Mayhem so stay tuned and thanks again